Imagine you're a straight wire, and you're chilling. However, you aren't some dead wire without a current, you carry a current. Now given the fact that you are cool enough to transmit an electrical current, you will also create a magnetic field. This is because your moving electrons create changing electric fields, and they will create a magnetic field as a result. Knowing this, we can use the right hand rule to determine the direction of the magnetic field that is created by the current by pointing your thumb in the direction of the current and as you curl your fingers, the magnetic field will follow the direction that your fingers rotate. But how would we actually find the value of the magnetic field? Similar to Gauss's law, to calculate the magnetic field, we can make use of a theoretical object to enclose some current to find the value of the magnetic field. But instead of finding the area of the shape we make, we make use of Ampere's law that utilizes the length of the shape instead with an Amperian loop. So for our first example, I've decided to use my body for whatever reason as a representation of an infinite wire. Let us first find the direction of the magnetic field. The current of or the direction of my body points right. So using the right hand rule we can see that the magnetic field follows a direction like this. Okay, so now that we have the basic concept down, I'll just go over a few quick examples on how to calculate the magnetic field given that you have a current. So in our first example we have an infinite straight wire that has a current that's pointing to the right. So off the bat we can find that the magnetic field will go around it like a circle. So using the right hand rule, we can see that the magnetic field will go around the current in this fashion. Second, to actually apply Ampere's law, we have to be able to take the magnetic field out of the integral and make it constant along all points of an Amperian loop that we create. So if you imagine, where would the magnetic field be constant all around all points of the current? If you said circle, you are correct. So we use a circle as our Amperian loop to find the actual magnetic field. Let me show you how we actually do that. So if we're able to take b out of the integral, we would have something like this. We take b out because it's a constant and then the integral of dl is just l. Then let's imagine the front view of this wire. So here we have an example of the front view of the wire if we're looking at it with it pointing towards us. This dot in the middle with the circle represents the current and the dot means that it's coming out of the page towards us. We have an Imperium loop around it that follows the magnetic field so we're able to say that the magnetic field is constant along all points of the Imperium loop. And the radius is the distance from the current to a point that we select where we're trying to find the magnetic field. So say we're trying to find the magnetic point, the magnetic field at a point B that was right here, the radius would be the distance from the current to B. So that would be like here. So Using this formula, it's b times l, which is the length of the Imperial loop, is equal to u naught i. The length of the Imperial loop would just be the circumference of a circle. So that would be... So, b l turns into b 2 pi r equals u naught i enclosed. The reason why the i is just i is because the current enclosed is just this current that has a current of i. So the only thing that's enclosed is i. So because this follows on closed, we put that there, and then if we move 2 pi over, we would find the magnetic field as u naught i over 2 pi r. Now let's do a second example. What the f- Okay guys, so no joke, the biggest moth that I've ever seen was just chilling on my desk right here and then it flew up but now it's hiding under my bed so I have my croc ready if it comes back but anyways let's go over this example it's a solenoid with n loops per length out so what does this actually mean? Ampere's law is usual b dot dl but here we don't use a circle anymore we use a rectangle I want to actually explain why we use a rectangle so if we use the right hand rule right here and point our thumb in the direction of the current the magnetic field 
points to the left because if we curl our fingers the magnetic field will point like that for every current and then and all of them will be pointing to the left so inside was something that looks like this but the magnetic field points to the left the entire time with our shape we have a rectangle here along this portion because it's b dot dl it has to be in line with the magnetic field for it to actually count because cosine of zero is one so here at the bottom portion of the rectangle counts but on the sides here that's perpendicular so it won't count and in this example we have to assume that the solenoid is infinite infinite solenoids do not exist but we have to assume that for this magnetic field at the top to be equal to zero so that means that this top portion does not contribute either so now that means that all we have to do is find the length here and then current that is enclosed are these dots right here because it's inside of the apparent loop that we created which is a rectangle in this case and then it's not the i enclosed will not simply be i in this case it'll be the number of loops that we hear in this have in the solenoid and let's assume that each of them have a current i so we have n loops each with the current i l is just the length of this rectangle so if we move the l over we'll just get that the magnetic field is equal to u naught n i over l we say that little n is simply equal to n over l so our final equation for magnetic field is b equals u naught n i and finally to end it off we'll do a quick example of a toroid with n total windings so a toroid is a shape which is basically just a donut and then inside we have wire that is wrapped around inside so if we were to imagine this real quick we would have a circle inside like this as you can see here and then we have wire that is wrapped around inside so if we have a theoretical shape like this the wire will pierce the circle that we make with current at points along the circle so if we just imagine this the wire will pierce the circle that we make with current at all of these points theoretically so how would we find the magnetic field of that so we use Ampere's law to get this equation the reason why we have 2 pi r here is because the length of the circle is just the circumference which is 2 pi r and then the i enclosed is the number of coils that are here because that's how many times it'll pierce the circle that we made like this at all of these points that we have and then we say that each piercing is a current of i so finally that will just leave us with the magnetic field of u naught and i over 2 pi r so guys hopefully this video helped you to understand how to calculate some examples of magnetic fields and have a good day